Hey, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Are we we alive <laughs> once again? So funny saying that because we <laughs> we're literally alive before we uh, go into the session, but we are live uh, for tonight's session, Wisdom Wednesday session on continuing continuing the discussion on uh, protecting assets with uh, Brother Derek Parker, protecting assets and specifically in the area of trust. I think last week we talked about insurances uh, or insurance and ways to protect assets through insurance. Tonight we're going a little further uh, and talk about um, trust. And so it's going to be a very interesting topic. This is one we all need to talk about. We all need to hear. We all need to discuss. And we are blessed to have Brother Derek Parker with us this evening. Once again, I mean, let, let me just stop right here and publicly thank Brother Parker for all of his time. I think we've done at least, if, if this is not the seventh, this may be the eighth, seventh week, is it the seventh, seventh week? week? Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. I'm so glad that he's been patient and he's been willing to donate his time uh, with us to share this important information. We pray that God will just bless him through this process. Uh, and once again, he's here with us to uh, go over this topic. I think at one point we talked about, we talked with him and the Register of Wheels, uh, Sister, uh, Sarita, Sarita Lee. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sarita Lee. I hope I said her name right. <laughs> and uh, so this is kind of in unison with that wills and, and trust and of course insurance in between. So all of it's important. Let's have a word of prayer and then we'll jump right in. We'll allow Brother Parker to do his thing and bless us once again. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you for the great things that you've done in this day. We thank you how you blessed us, God, to see this point in the journey, God. And when we look back over our lives and think things over, God, and see how far you brought us, God, all we can say is hallelujah. So, God, thank you right now for what you're about to do tonight. We ask a special blessing upon um, Brother Parker. We ask that you continue to bless Pastor Turner. God, that he'll join us soon. And, God, we ask that you would just continue to bless all who would join us tonight to hear this message, as well as those who had it in their heart to join and just couldn't make it. We pray that this information, God, will be a blessing to your people, to your community, and to the body of Christ on the whole. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. And in the midst of my praying, look at that. Look at God. <laughs> <laughs> I prayed up. I prayed up. Pastor Turner up. Praise the Lord. Pastor Turner, how are you this evening? Doing well. Uh, clearly uh, late, but I apologize for my tardiness, and I thank God for um, Brother Parker and for you to hold, holding it down until I got on. Oh, praise the Lord. I praise the Lord. I've already thanked him publicly for, for being with us now. I think he said this was the seventh week, right? Uh, yeah. Amen. So he's been with us for seven weeks and uh, been doing a wonderful job blessing us. And so we're going to turn it right over to Brother Parker tonight as we, uh, as he, <laughs> we, we're just going to be sitting on the sidelines with questions, as he uh, discusses this topic of trust with us. God bless you, Brother Parker, please. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, thanks again. Uh, you know, Pastor Ruffin and Pastor Turner, I'm always grateful. Uh, like I say, this is, uh, for me, it's look forward to Wednesdays now. <laughs> so, yeah, always something to look forward to in the middle of the week. Uh, great insight, great, uh, you know, time to reverence and uh, talk about, you know, uh, you know, financial principles. We've been talking, as you mentioned, over the last seven weeks. And uh, I just know there's been a lot of, uh, you know, faithful listeners. There's been individuals that have been blessed uh, in many of my walks and travels, even through virtual media, people, social media, they have conveyed, hey, that is a great talk. That is something that is really impactful. I didn't know this. I didn't know that. So, um, you know, as long as we're touching the lives and the hearts of, of a few people, then our work is, you know, not in vain. And uh, certainly I praise God for, you know, what you two gentlemen do and how you're serving Christ in your community and uh, you're, you're impacting, you know, God's principles, because as we talked before, you know, the Bible is crystal clear on, on uplifting, you know, his God's kingdom as far as, you know, biblical principles that matter and make sense and uh, financial prosperity and uh, financial stewardship is a significant part of it. Very vital component that we've been dwelling into over the last few weeks. So, uh, tonight, I'm really excited about, you know, really uh, talking about another component that uh, oftentimes we don't talk about. I uh, just recently did an in-person workshop a couple of days ago, and the topic was on wills and trust. So it's one of those things that, 
you know, that parades are, you know, community. Many people, you know, uh, have a reason to talk about it. Uh, you know, when you talk about 900,000 people perishing in a pandemic, there's a, there's a lot of discussion on these important topics. So I'm grateful that, you know, you have a heart to, again to sow and to instill these things uh, for your for your flock. And uh, that is that's a great thing. So we're gonna jump right in tonight uh, and talking about um, wills. Well, we talked about wills over the last several weeks, but now we're gonna talk a little bit about trust because uh, that's a very, very important component uh, as far as, uh, you know, protecting your financial house. So, um, you know, I don't wanna make it combative, uh, so I'll, I'll pull right up my slides, but but necessary. So wills versus trust, okay? Again, not to be combative, but again, to be, uh, to really show the pros and cons of, of both sides of the equation. I think it's important. What is the difference in which option is right for you? Okay, so there's not a right, wrong, right option. There's not a wrong option. It's just what option is important for you. So um, while we're talking about that, let's just kind of, Go back through a little bit, you know, while wills and trusts, as it says here, they don't have an overlap, but there are several differences between the two. And that's very, very important that, that you know, uh, we understand that both as, as they say, there's a way to, you know, distribute your assets. But the biggest difference in the two, as it conveys here, is how and when they take effect. So wills, uh, they don't go in effect until you die. Okay. So so I have a living, I have a written will, okay, a final will. It does not take effect until um, my death, my date of death, okay? So, um, so upon my date of death, therefore, there has to be a person called an executor, okay, an uh, executor of your estate. That's just a person that you deem, uh, you know, financially or fiscally responsible to carry out your wishes, okay, to, to execute your will. Now, on the other hand, a trust, uh, it's effective immediately, okay? So immediately upon signing it, um, but also signing it, we'll, we'll jump into a little bit of, of you have to fund it as well. So we'll, so, let, so let's talk a little bit about um, a little bit further, okay? So as it conveys here, uh, it may be easier to think of a will as a, as a simple document, okay? Um, which essentially allows you to name, you know, your children, your, you know, um, uh, simple assets, you know, where assets are going. You have to be able to specify, you know, final arrangements and things of that nature. So while a will may be a easier process or a simpler process, uh, wills as it conveys, um, you have limited control as far as distribution of assets. So, but the biggest, the biggest, let me just say this, the absolute biggest challenge that most people run into with a will is there's a thing called probate, okay? Probate is a process that takes place inevitably, okay? If you have a will or you don't have a will, inevitably, every human being will have to go through that process. And that has to do with uh, the process, process of determining who gets the assets, the distribution of assets. So you could very well have a will, okay? And your will will still have to pass through probate uh, for the mere fact that uh, that executor has to come forward. They have to basically, um, you know, carry out your wishes. And then moreover, one of the worst things that any individuals can, can postulate is that someone would challenge your will, okay? Uh, it does happen, okay? Many times over, okay? Uh, wills not only get challenged, there's a, there's a challenge, there's a, the potential problem sometime in, in wills in terms of authenticity, okay? Um, we hear this oftentimes in Hollywood, you know, uh, uh, infamous celebrity passes away and, and we're always wondering, hey, a will appeared, you know, for James Brown, you know, we, they, they have to determine whether or not it's the original, um, his brother-in-law's cousin, you know, came forward with it. So we have to determine the authenticity of it. So, so that's, that's potentially a problem, you know, with, with wills, but the biggest challenge is, is the probate process. And, uh, you know, most people typically do not like to go through the, pro uh, the probate process because it can be very comp comprehensive. Okay, so what is a trust? So let's talk a little bit about a trust, okay? So a trust, as it simplifies here, it's a bit more complicated 
but it gives you what is called control. Okay, so I want you to think about this. It offers control, greater control of how and when your assets are distributed. Okay, so a trust, it can apply to any asset that you have. So for example, um, oftentimes individuals who get trust, typically the assets are pretty sizable. Okay, what's a number? Well, I'll give you an average. Um, you know, I'll hear people say, hey, I got assets anywhere between five, a half million to a million. I want to trust. Okay, why? Because I want to make sure that you know, upon my transfer that, you know, or my demise, that those assets are distributed accordingly, okay? So a trust is going to be a legal, it's going to be a legal contract, right? It's going to be executed while you're living, and then those assets are going to go into that trust, and uh, essentially, it's going to, it's going to pass on directly to your loved ones or your beneficiaries or, or your, you know, uh, uh, the individuals who are going to receive that trust upon um, your death. So uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about some of the types of trust. Now, I don't want to make this complicated, okay? We don't want to make this complicated, Pastor Turner. There's a lot of different trust out here, right? Uh, my, 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 my MO tonight is not to, to come in and talk a lot about um, the different types of trust. I just want to let you know, uh, one of the more common ones for our discussion tonight is, is an irrevocable trust, okay? So what does that mean? That just means it's a trust that absolutely cannot be changed unless it's done so um, in writing, okay? So so irrevocable just means, hey, you, you, you can't change it. You just can't call up and say, hey, look, I wanna make some changes in my trust, blah, blah, blah. It has, it, man, it's, it's like, boom, it's, it's in place, it's irrevocable, okay? So the person, the grantor, okay, can make that change, uh, and, but they have to do it in writing. And then we're going to talk a little bit about a revocable trust. What does that mean? That just means it's the opposite, okay? It can be changed, okay? So, so these are going to be the two big ones that we're going to talk about. Of course, there's a lot of other trusts. There's a constructive trust. There's a spendthrift cross trust. There's a charitable trust. There's a lot of different trusts. And these, the purpose of the trust, again, is what? To bypass the probate process, okay? So people do trust oftentimes, okay, for business matters where you have significant large sums of money where they don't have to worry about the legalities, you know, of, of, of the, you know, the of the cumbersome legal process to ensure that those individuals get the money. So let's just talk about a, a re really simple, what we call a family trust, okay? This is a simplified family trust. So um, so looking at the the graph here, this depicts, you know, the executives who administer, who administer the trust. So usually, you know, an attorney, okay, that, that's an executive who, who can administer the trust. Um, and then the grantor, okay, that's going to be the person who's, who's obviously, you know, creating the trust. And then there, you're going to have another person called the beneficiary. That's going to be the person who's going to receive the trust. So this is just a really simplified trust. Uh, so in my trust, um, I'm going to have what? Household accounts, okay? Maybe goods from a household, maybe sizable household items, you know? Um, you know, uh, I got, you know, maybe some you know, furniture, some invaluable paintings, some artifacts and things like that. Uh, personal property, you know, uh, retirement accounts, business interests. So all those things, okay? All those items are going to be inclusive in the trust, okay? So, so upon that person's demise, Okay, uh, that that trust is going to carry over. Now, it's again, you're not going to have to go through the you know the probate process, which really really simplifies uh, this process. So keep in mind, as it says here, um, after you create the trust, so upon me going in to have a trust created uh, by, a, by a legal person, an attorney, um, I have to now fund the trust. So I have to transfer the assets. You know, the assets have to you know, go into the trust. So in other words, those assets have to be legally binding and bound in, in, in that trust. So um, we know exactly, you know, uh, that this trust is in place. Um, I'm going to receive a trust document or, or a certificate. And, um, you know, the trust, as I mentioned, may be a little bit complicated, depends, depends upon what are some of the, you know, legalities, the things that, you know, that I just showed you a little bit, um, um, before, but as I mentioned before, uh, they avoid probate entirely. Okay, so this is a huge plus for some people. 
you know? So this sometimes makes all the difference in the world. Sometimes I engage with people who say, you know what? I want to do a trust. I don't want to do a will. I want to do a trust. Um, you know, I can think of a client um, probably about three or four years ago, and she had four, four or five children, and uh, she was debating, hey, uh, I have a house that's paid off, $600,000 house. I have, you know, all of these children. I have a will, um, but, I'm, but I'm really contemplating a trust because I really don't know, how do, how do I split a house? <laughs> how do I determine, okay, which of my children are gonna, you know, take care of the house? And, and her wishes were to, to um, make sure that the house was still intact, that she wanted her kids to, you know, raise her kid, raise their kids and bring the, use the house as kind of like a, you know, a mediator where, you know, everyone can really come together and, and still, you know, have family time and do things of that nature. So, so a trust was amenable for her because for that reason alone, she wanted to make sure that uh, that's important. So oftentimes I get this other question about a trust and this just really simplifies it. A trust is like, okay, so Derek, what is a trust like? Okay, what, what's the simplicity of a trust? A trust is like a retirement account. Okay, so why is that? Well, in a retirement account, you have a thing called a beneficiary. Okay, so if you're listed as a beneficiary in a retirement account, you you would go, there, there'll be, there's, there's no way that you're going to um, overturn that uh, person's name that is listed as the beneficiary. Okay, so so think of a trust like that. Okay, it's going to avoid probate. Retirement account, it's going to avoid probate. A life insurance policy, similarly, it has a named beneficiary. It's like a trust. Okay, so meaning upon that person's death, those assets are going to go directly uh, to that person, okay, who's listed, you know, on, on that account. So a trust uh, is, is not going to be overturned. Okay? It, it can be challenged though. Okay. So, so someone could, you know, uh, potentially make an attempt to challenge a trust. Very, very, very complicated and costly. So you can imagine probably what would happen if one were to make an attempt um, as far as uh, trying to challenge a trust. So usually individuals, when they see that the person has a trust in place, they're like, whoa, <laughs> You know, Pastor Turner, they're like, whoa, they went the extra mile. I better leave this alone. There's, no, there's, there's, there's nothing really I can do to really combat this. So, so that's very, very important um, to do that. Now, here's a great little uh, chart uh, illustration, and this will help some of the audience uh, to really look at why wills and trusts, you know, do have, you know, some overlap. There are a lot of, you know, several differences between the two. So, looking here, um, as I alluded to earlier. Um, own one property, okay. So, 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 in other words, you know, in a trust, okay, you can have multiple properties and you know things of that nature, okay. So, so looking at looking at a trust, you know, if if a person has again sizable assets, typically um, that's going to be important, okay. So, so you can't you can't transfer property in a will, okay. You can name that person, but but it's not again, it's not going to avoid the the probate process um, and things like that. Possesses over $200,000 in assets. Yes, so typically when people have size, sizable assets, they're going to uh, you know, look at a trust as a possibility. I know it says 200,000 here. Usually the range I hear is usually between 500 to a million, uh, but hey, someone can very well do that. They can have a house or houses and say, hey, I wanna include that. Avoid probate, of course. A trust is gonna avoid probate and the will does not, it does not avoid probate. You're gonna to have to enter into a probate, uh, a trust. Looking here, it is a taxable estate. And then uh, looking at a will, okay? So you're, you're basically gonna have, um, you know, some things uh, that you're gonna to have to work through as far as um, a will is concerned. Now, taxes, yeah, it's a little bit cumbersome. Uh, I would, you know, per your, you know, CPA to really, you know, ascertain what would be the taxes, you know, upon your 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 trust? It, it it certainly depends upon, you know, the size of of the trust and the number of assets that are inclusive in that. And then, lastly, stipulations on inheritance. Okay, so yeah, you can be very clear in a trust as far as stipulating. Hey, I want uh, 
you know, my daughter to have a hundred thousand dollars when she turns 21. Okay. And then every year thereafter, I want her to have $50,000, you know, coming, you know, for a duration of um, X amount of years. Can't do those things in a will. Okay. A will just really concludes this is who gets what. And it's pretty, um, pretty simplified, you know, with, with, with that um, is concerned. So um, well, my, I do have a second, a uh, little second part. I'm going to, uh, I can carry back some questions. So Pastor Ruffin and, and Pastor Turner, I know it gets a little bit uh, intense when we're talking about these issues, very important issues. So I'm going to kind of pause right there. We can dialogue and then I can kick back on the second part. Uh, Excellent. Here. Excellent. Because we did have a, a comment or, yeah, I guess it was a comment. Uh, and I'll say the person, uh, Tara Grant, Gant says she didn't know that uh, you still have to go through the probate process with a will. Yes, uh, you do. And she says, when you go, when, when, the, when a will goes into probate is a cost incurred. And if so, who pays for that? Does it come out of the estate? Yeah, it's usually a, a cost that's incurred in the estate. Um, one of the things that, that we did uh, talk about, I know I, I didn't you know, bring that up here, but when you're dealing with a, a, uh, a will, um, whether a person uh, had a will or they did not have a will, one of the challenges of, of dealing with wills in particular is uh, uh, the, the survivor or, or spouse or beneficiary uh, of a particular estate, um, they have to generate a thing called letters of administration, okay? Letters of administration is essentially, you have to prove to the, the courts that you were uh, the individual to inherit those assets, okay? So if, I, so if I don't have a will, okay, essentially what I have to do is I have to go, you know, down to the, you know, the registry and I have to you know, show proof and just cause of, hey, I'm the spouse. This is what my loved ones left. And um, I have to create an estate account. But in order to create the estate account, you have to go to a bank, you have to open up the account, and then you have to um, garner these things called letters of administration. It's kind of like a death certificate, you know? Um, you know, if a death certificate for any claim you make, you have to give that individual or that entity a death certificate. Same thing on the letters of administration. So that can be very, very complicated, you know, in that process. But yes, um, there is a cost incurred, you know, to that. And, and that's usually, that's paid out through the estate account. Um, you mentioned, so I was very, very taken aback by how many different types of trust there were. I, I really didn't realize yeah. there were so many different types. Um, but how long, in general, how long do assets have to be in trust to protect them from other entities, yeah, it's it, it's it's usually uh, it, it's upon com completion. So as soon as that trust is is you know the grantor initiates it and it's you know it's it's intact immediately. So it's kind of like um, it's just like uh, writing a or executing a, an insurance policy or a retirement account. Okay, those things are entrusted. There's no statute of limitations as far as well. Technically, he didn't have the account for two years, so. <laughs> You know, the beneficiary can't receive it. No, it's 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 immediately. Mm -hmm. So that is granted immediately. You know, um, unless there's some type of stipulation in that particular trust. But um, usually, it's important that uh, you be very clear um, as to you know when and how and and what uh, occurrence is going to take place within the trust. And and as I mentioned before, um, as soon as the trust, you know, you have to fund the trust. That's the most important thing, as, as we alluded to a little bit earlier. So you, it's one thing to create it, but it's another to begin to fund it through the assets that, that we outlined a little bit before. Right. So if you, if let's say I'm thinking about this from a long term care, let's say uh, a person gets sick or they're, they're, they're realizing they're going to be sick, right? Or they get the diagnosis and they say, okay, I need to start moving assets out of my name. This is possibly term, they don't know if they're going to be in a long-term care facility as a result of it, what's going to happen. So they want to protect those assets. So in that case, is it still e immediate and doesn't have to be an irrevocable trust? Can it be revocable in case you live, you know, whatever, you know, how does all of that work? Yeah. You, you, you kind of get into some little legalities, legalities, which entail case by case, you know, of course, 
no, I'm not going to pin the, uh, pin the donkey as far as, hey, this is, you know, uh, intact for every individual. You know, of course, that person would want to consult with their CPA, um, you know, or their legal, you know, expert regarding, you know, that, that case. Um, of course, if you're talking about, you know, garnishing or liquidating a person's assets, particularly as it, you know, deals with, you know, death and things of that nature. I mean, you, you, there's a lot of things that come into place. Um, are they, uh, are they, are they indigent? Um, are you, are you trying to, you know, self dissolve the assets to, to put them in a nursing home, things of that. I mean, you know, it could be very, very complicated. So you have to make sure you have to adhere to that because, there's been a lot of people cited for trying to do those things or try attempting to do those things unsuccessfully and finding out there is a there is a statue as far as you know those things are concerned. So I would definitely consult with with your you know legal expert to, to really make sure that that's that's in fact. And uh, one last one for I, for in case Pastor Turner has questions. Um, when you do a trust and you're moving as if you have joint assets. You know, mm -hmm. your spouse on the assets. Is it is it set up so that when the the last surviving uh, spouse is deceased, that all or, or is it immediately? Well, you assets can, you, like you say you got to fund it or move the assets immediately, so they have to go in trust immediately. So both spouses have to agree up front. Well, you know, you can you can establish in any way you choose. You know, that's that's the uniqueness of a trust. You do have some flexibility. You know, you can say, hey, this I'm establishing a trust uh, deemed uh, right to survivorship, meaning that upon my demise, then subsequently this will transfer to my loved one. Uh, rights of survivorship deemed appropriate for my children or whatever. So you can set that up, you know, how however you choose to. Uh, if you're going to if you're going to set up a trust, you're going to you're going to you're going to do everything that you need to do to to really kind of avoid any loopholes, which kind of kind of brings me to my, on my second part, I'll talk a little bit about, um, is it, is it advisable to have a trust and a will? So <laughs> that's a big common question. People say, well, I got a trust. Do I need to go get a will too? So, um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, the only question I had were, um, what are the pitfalls of having a trust? Mm. Right, Cause everything, you know, I want us to be mindful of, I mean, while it may, you know, it is easier to accomplish or to help those who <clears throat> are, are, those who are benefiting from the assets of that person who's passed away, but I'm sure there are also um, hindrances to that, um, um, yeah. to that process and to actually get the assets. Can you speak on those? Yeah, the biggest pitfall is cost. <laughs> Most people, most people learn the cost of a trust and they, they shy away from it. So, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, I alluded to last time, really talking about the cost associated with a, a basic will. I mean, um, I've been around individuals who spend as upward as far as $1,200 for a will. And then similarly, I've, I've, or conversely, I've, I've uh, experienced individuals spending as much as three to 4,000 for a trust. So typically when people hear those numbers, they, they shy away from a trust. You know, um, it's it's sometimes baffling a little bit to think, well, um, not to minimize the you know the, the importance of either one of them because they're obviously very important. But uh, how could you minimize paying, say, if a will were five hundred dollars? How could you minimize that compared to the thousands of dollars that you're going to cost your loved ones in the event of you know um, an estate you know challenge? So. It's certainly worth it. You know, that's one of the biggest challenges is pitfall, pitfalls or, or, or things that really prevent people is, is cost. The second reason would be uh, complexity. They really don't know um, exactly how they're going to divulge, you know, things to be entrusted or whether or not they have assets that need to be, you know, entrusted. So those are typically things, two things, cost and complexities that really prevent people know, from entering into that. So uh, at the very least, and I alluded to it last week, it's amenable for anyone, everyone, every breathing human being who or adult uh, to have a will, to, you know, really start with a basic will. You can, you can divulge into whether or not, you know, you need a trust a little bit later, your assets become a little bit sizable. Uh, if, if you have business acumen, 
that's something that, you know, eventually you begin to evolve and start talking about a trust anyway. So um, that, that would be, you know, things right there. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Pastor Turner, once you, uh, once your estate reaches several millions of dollars, we're talking tens and twenties and hundreds of millions, praise God. <laughs> and then you, you definitely won't worry about how much it's going to cost you to have a trust, right? right? As much, right? So in those cases, a trust may be better. But Brother Parker, you mentioned cost as a downside. So are there also, and I know you need to jump to the other part, administrative costs for, um, for someone administering your tr trust, especially if you build in language to administer it over time? Yeah, so so typically, if an, if an attorney is going to uh, assess, you know, doing a trust for you, uh, he or she is going to have a cost, you know, advocacy that's going to outline, you know, the administrative, you know, items, the initiation fee, you know, funding it. You know, they're gonna they're gonna have line items as far as what it's going to cost you, so they can give you a range. So it's that's why a trust is not as it's not a blanket, it's a simple, you know, fee that an individual is going to experience. They're going to want to know exactly. What is it going to entail? When do you want to execute it? You know, how long the duration, the executor. So there's there's a little bit of legwork involved in that. So there's line item fees that attorneys are are going to execute as far as that is concerned. Whereas a will, they're going to give you a basic you know fee on on completing a will. You know, they're going to give you a will questionnaire. It's pretty structured. Boom, 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 boom. This is my fee, and uh, you know you you're able to you know move forward on that. But that's the biggest one. The biggest one is just um, people really don't understand, or they 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 the cost is prohibitive from them moving forward. You know, a lot of time, and um, hindsight is twenty time twenty twenty. When a lot of times individuals go through those in you know those estate claims and challenges. I mean, you can't you can't be reincarnated. But if you were to come back and look at one of those why you should have had a trust oh my god <laughs> you know you'd be like what was i thinking you know <laughs> but definitely well worth it so all right so i'm gonna uh i'm gonna evolve a little bit into uh some uh second part of some things just a little bit more on the q a side and then we'll kind of go from there okay so we we're kind of alluding to this one a little bit before wills or trust which is better okay so this is a big question that comes up all, all the time, okay? So it's not really accurate or helpful to assume, as it says, one is better than the other, okay? So let's get that, let's, let's get that on the table. It's not clear to say having a will is better than having a trust, okay? If at the very least, and I want to appeal to all the listeners out here, if, if at the very least, if you have a will, that is better than anything. You're, you, you are beating uh, probably... 70% of most people in the estate process, because there's a lot of people that don't have wills, you know? So it's, you know, if, if I told you in your community right now, okay, you go door to door, we're in the Prince George's, you know, uh, community at large right here in the state of Maryland, there's seven out of 10 people of color who don't have wills. It's appalling. So you can imagine when Sarita Lee came on to this call last week, the, you know, the registrar, and she spoke about that. She spoke about all the challenges and the, you know, the, the fights and the bouts, man, you gotta, you gotta, at the very least get a will. Okay. So, so you just gotta understand that, Hey, there's one, one is not better than the other, but, um, but you have to identify a, a solution. So when you sit down with a, a, an attorney, um, a financial person, someone who can really um, ascertain your, your situation, and, and then you can ask the compelling questions. Now there's a plethora of information, even online. You can go online and, and, and educate yourself on these things. You've got to get educated about it. And you want to make sure you're educating uh, yourself as it appears to your state laws. So if you're listening to this and you're from another state or another county or another jurisdiction, you want to be clear about what is, uh, what's applicable for, for your particular juris jurisdiction. That's very, very important. So can you have both a will and a trust? As it says here, you can have both, but again, okay, um, they're different, okay, because looking as I alluded to earlier, a trust, you know, it provides for the, you know, the management distribution of your assets, you know, during the lifetime and after death, because once you fund the trust, again, that's, that's live, okay, I'm living, I funded my trust, hey, I have a trust, I can go ch make changes at any time, um, 
I can make changes in my trust that would apply to you while you're living. Okay, so so that's why the, the trust is active now. It doesn't, doesn't mean just because I die, the trust is carried out. No, it, trust may have a stipulation for a loved one. Uh, hey, 18 years of age, you're gonna get X amount of dollars. And then the rest is gonna come upon the graduation from, from college, okay? So a will, on the other hand, it's, it's not that. A will is just, hey, when you die, okay? So, so that's the important thing here. But there is another component of a trust. It's called a pour over, okay? Or you'll hear in some sections, they'll call it a spillover will, okay? So, so a pour over will. So what is a pour over will, okay? So as it, as it conveys here, a pour over will, um, anything a person owns outside of their trust, as well as anything that is subject to the last will, will be paid to your trust at the time of death. Okay, so so again, let me get say that again. Anything a person owns outside of their trust, as well as anything that is subject to their last will, will be paid uh, to the trust at the time of your death. So pour over wills, they act as a backup plan to ensure that all of your assets go under your trust. Okay, so this this gives me clear about that. So call it a pour over will. So 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 ultimately, when you go and have a trust done, you know you, a pour over may be, hey, um. I got some China from my mom that, uh, you know, she gave it to me, you know, 20 years ago. I want to ensure that, that that gets to the right place. Um, I have a, a, a vehicle. I have some, you know, clothing that maybe was passed on through a loved one. So, again, pour over, if you have a trust, is going to be able to, to, to redeem or make sure that those things uh, are inclusive in that trust. All righty. And uh, so important thing to note about um, a trust and, and wills, okay? So note that there's a thing called a living will. And I, we alluded to that last week, okay? So usually in a, um, in a basic will, typically they're gonna do a, they're gonna complete a thing called a living will. Now, this is something that whether you do a will or a trust, this is gonna be a very, very important component, okay? So it's called a, a living will. So a living will, okay? which is different from the last will, is gonna entail these three things. Medical power of attorney, an advanced healthcare directive, and then the HIPAA authorization form. Okay, so whether you do a trust or a will, uh, these documents uh, are very, very important, okay? Because they're gonna basically outline, again, uh, any event of death, okay? Or any event of becoming medically incapacitated what exactly happens, okay, uh, what are my wishes, who makes the final decision, you know, so, uh, so it's important that, you know, these things are, are actually included, so when you do a, you know, a trust, they're going to have a living, a living will component, which is uh, basically going to be, and uh, in, tell these things that are listed above, uh, so, so that's very, very important as well, so typically, if a person is going to do, uh, if they opt to do a basic will, you know, with that basic will, I will say, hey, look, do a, do a living will and then also do a uh, medical power of attorney or advanced directive to, to really address, hey, what happens to my financial matters, uh, you know, why I am still living. So upon your death, uh, again, a living or a basic will is going to is going to have residency and that's going to you know be important. Uh, or if you have a trust, uh, that's going to be carried out. Uh, as far as what's taking place here. And then uh, looking here, lastly, can I have a will and a trust? We just alluded to that, a revocable living trust and a pour over will, uh, which is uh, very, very important, you know, when you're doing uh, both of these uh, processes. You know, like I say, um, I know the question always comes up, is this something that I can complete myself? <laughs> Let me just say this. You can go sell your house by yourself. You can do a FISBO for sale by owner, right? Um, but uh, when you sell a house by yourself, you got to make sure you're adherent to all the state laws. You got to make sure that you're including all the fees, you know, associated with selling a house. And uh, if you miss something, it could become very costly. And similarly, if you're advocating or putting a trust together and you're not paying anybody for guidance or legal counsel and you miss something, it could be very costly. You want to make sure that 
regardless of, of how and if or in what you're doing, that uh, you're getting good legal guidance, that you're making sure that uh, you're adherent to the state laws, that uh, you're uh, you know, covering every aspect that needs to be addressed. And uh, if you're gonna spend a fee, you know, certainly uh, feel good that uh, you sought wise counsel to, to do the work. So um, I'll take some questions here. Uh, this is, you know, basically my contact information. If you feel as though, you know, you want me to expound on any particular area, you know, uh, certainly you feel free to contact me via email, you can call me uh, even directly, or you have a website where you can reach me. And uh, lastly, uh, Pastor Turner and Pastor Ruffin, man, it's always time for questions, right? All righty. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you once again for sharing that information. Um, I'm not sure. If, okay. Um, you mentioned the uh, power of attorney. You mentioned the living will, I think is what you call the living will, right? Mm -hmm. So the living will, is that meant to, again, to lay out your desires as far as if something should happen to you, you become incapacitated and things of that nature. So that maybe it takes some of the emotion out of, for some, they, they might want to just pull the plug on you, but it, it, it kind of lays it out. If I'm incapacitated to your desire, whatever the person's desires are, then they lay that out in a living will. And then the persons who that's a legal document and it has to be followed, correct? Yeah, um, there was a, you know, speaking of the living will, there's, you know, uh, you know, we always reference the case in Florida that, it, you know, that always comes to light, you know, I think it was what, 15, almost 20 years ago. Uh, I forget the, uh, the lady's name, Sandra or something, it went to the Supreme Court, but that's exactly what happened. The uh, husband, uh, essentially wanted to pull the plug on his wife, who's he was a vegetable, and uh, her family fought him and legally, and it went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court uh, went in favor of the spouse and said he has medical custody of or over his wife, and essentially he pulled the plug, and he was awarded a three hundred thousand dollar life insurance policy. So was it right from a moral <laughs> aspect? Uh, not sure, but hey, from a legal aspect, he had all the rights in the world. So one of the important components, you know, of devising your estate plan is called a living will, you know, for that reason alone. So living will, yes, is uh, like if I were to ask you right now, outside of your spouse, who would make a decision, to pull the plug on you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> God forbid if something were to take place collectively between yourself and your loved one, your spouse and you know, I, I could think of some people I would pray that wouldn't be making that decision for me. <laughs> you know, they look at the counts and be like, well, won't he do it? <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So, <laughs> so, he got the gun. So, so, so you want to make sure that um, that's in writing, that you, you, have, that, you have that basis covered. Uh, this this arises on numerous occasions, you know, and, um, you know, that, you know, usually if, if, if you do have some type of medical, you know, hardship or me medical, you know, um, illness, um, they're required by law to ask you, do you have a will? You know, oftentimes, even that with that, individuals will sometimes opt, they'll opt out, they'll say, hey, I'm not interested. <laughs> you know? Like, oh, I'm not going to see the daddy. I'm <laughs> it's amazing. So, so that's important. Your your living will, yes, it it has it has sanctity while you're still living. So it it really outlines uh, exactly uh, what are your wishes, who's going to make those medical decisions for you, those hard earned medical decisions, and then with that power of attorney, uh, that power of attorney gives that person um, financial jurisdiction to make those decisions for you, um, to pay those bills, to. Yeah, the autonomy to be autonomy to do the things that you otherwise can't do, and that's you know essential. So so it's important that um, you know if you are going to complete a basic will that you have a component such as the living will uh, section that that I just conveyed. And it's not it's not mandated though, Pastor. So so it's not you know again sometimes people do these uh, 
do a will online for one.com, you know, <laughs> and it's going to, it's just going to, it's just going to cover a basic will and that's it. You know, it's not going to cover anything else. Okay. So, so usually if you go the trust route, uh, you're going to have that component that's going to be available for you. They're going to walk you step by step, you know, to do that. So, um, very, very important, you know, uh, part of the estate plan to make sure that uh, you have those things completed. So there are other uh, types of, there may not be like these types of trusts, but like uniform trust management accounts, uniform trust gift accounts, those types of things where you can invest in young folks or invest in others while they're of possibly of a, not of a legal age to make decisions, financial decisions for themselves. Uh, it, it, do yes. you have any information about those or, I mean, I know, you know, you can do that to build assets, but you can also uh, protect those assets as they grow for young people. I was uh, sharing with you, I think it was about um, Ashley Fox, I think her name is. She was talking mm -hmm. about uh, investing in her niece and helping her niece to become a millionaire by the time she's 18 or 21 or whatever you set the the, the time frame for the age for. So any any ideas, any thoughts on those uniform trust uh, management accounts or yeah, yeah, those those are those are essential, you know, um accounts, particularly for minors, where um uh, again, it's you know uh, a trust account where you're list, listed as uh you would be listed as a responsible person, okay, or guardian, uh, and you would have a minor listed on that account. So therefore that's money that's being invested that may be utilized for a variety of reasons. Like you say, it may be discretionary to have a lot of money later on in life, or it may be for educational needs, whatever. You are essentially declaring that uh, this is a trust account, that that person, that minor is gonna be the beneficiary, the benefactor, you know, at, you know, usually at 18 years of age. And therefore, um, I'm okay with it. So you can you can fund those for nominal amounts. Usually you can you can fund an UGMA. We use the acronyms, you know, Unifor Gift, you know, for minority or UTMA. Uh, you can usually fund those for nominal amounts. You can 50 bucks a month, hundred dollars a month. You know, one could get started with that now. However, you may have some special kids that you may say, there ain't no way I'm giving up <laughs> my my guardianship or <laughs> or the, the authority <laughs> to allow that child to have that money until they prove themselves otherwise. So, um, you know, you, you can have those accounts though and, and, and really have stipulations in that. If I'm the guardianship and, and that money is not used, you know, for, you know, appropriate purposes, um, you, you could render, you could take back over, you know, those accounts, you know, like an educational savings account, you could take back over you know, there would be a penalty associated with it, but um, but a lot of lot of individuals use those accounts for that reason alone to transfer money. Mm -hmm. So that's a great way to to provide wealth transfer of, of, of monies, you know, to to children uh, that are coming of age. So um, another component is is gifting. You know, um, a loved one can can gift. I think the gifting this year. And I think it's two, I think it's fifteen thousand dollars a year, you know, that you're allowed to gift. So again, people say, well, why would you gift? <laughs> well, if you've got money, you can you understand the importance of gifting. You're 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 downsizing your estate. You're you're allowing money to to come up out of your estate without having to show an accountability for it. So so gifting becomes you know very attractive, you know. Um you know, for some individuals. So, so that, that's just another, you know, form of wealth transfer. But there's a lot of forms of, of trust that, that we alluded to. Uh, one thing I do want to be clear on um, as, as we talk about trust and, and a little bit of it has to do with, since we're talking about accounts and, and UGMAs and, and things of that nature, um, we want to be clear on our beneficiary provisions in anything and everything that we do. Okay. Um, I remember uh, several years ago, seven years ago, I got a call, phone call from a um, a woman who who conveyed, um, "Hey, I have uh, one hundred fifty thousand dollars in my possession. 
and it came from my uh, my ex, and uh, we we severed the marriage probably 15 years ago. And I was like, oh, <laughs> and uh, she said, well, hey, it's it's in my name. I want I want to, you know, invest the money, and I'm a little bit con- I'm a little bit confused. And I said, how did your ex, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> leave you $150,000. And she said that my name was left on the, on the beneficiary account. Mm-hmm. Um, before his death, he never changed anything. And two days later, I got a phone call from his mama <laughs> mm-hmm. asking, is there anything legally I can do <laughs> to prevent that transfer of that money to my ex-daughter-in-law? <laughs> so... You know where I'm going with this. So I said, well, there's there's nothing legally that you can do on my end to prevent that. I mean, you 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 can obviously, you know, you can file a claim, you can take them to court, you do whatever, but um, it's gonna be a highway in hell for you before you get that money out. And uh, so so we have to be very, very clear that if you've had a life change, okay, um, that you need to basically make the um adjustments in your respective accounts meaning when i say life change you got married you've had children you've had the death of a loved one uh you've moved you need to re reevaluate those accounts on an annual basis anytime you have a life life change you need to make um those adjustments and oftentimes they're overlooked you know i could think of several couples you know who said oh my god i'm you know um and this personally happened in my life and I think I may have shared this story. I, I can't recall if I did, but it personally happened in my life. You know, my uh, brother, my brother-in-law mm-hmm. lost his brother um, four, uh, four months into a new job as a, as a police officer. And uh, so four months into a new job as a police officer, he acquired, he had an aneurysm, dropped dead suddenly. He just recently got married and never changed anything. Mm-hmm. So, so you, you want to be clear about making changes, because as we talk about trust and we talk about these things that we're identifying here, when we talk about a trust, it's a legally binding contract. It is, it's very intact. It's very, very arduous to try to change any of those things after the passing of a loved one. So we have to be very clear about these things. And oftentimes, honestly, I've had couples who who remarried and they forgot to change things and, and, you know, something happens and um, these are honest mistakes, but you just need to become very wary of, of these things. We need to address these things, you know, as, as we evolve. So very, very important, you know, topic as we talk about trust and beneficiaries, make sure that you're very, very clear about your beneficiaries. You know, uh, you should always revisit your account, revisit your retirement accounts, revisit your life insurance policies, revisit your group, group life insurance policies you have on your job. Make sure that you are very clear about what is to take place you know, any event of something happening to you, so. Well, I also wanted to, uh, I've seen the case where, you know, you can change a lot of these things online now. Um, Fortunately or unfortunately, I've seen cases where uh, older gentlemen after losing, after having their spouse pass away, uh, remarry young chickadee and, you know, She's savvy enough to go in there and change uh, beneficiaries, and you know, two years later, you know, the gentleman or or or, or lady passes away, and that new chickadee has everything because everything. they've gone in and made these changes. So, yes. yeah, you do need to be mindful. Of, and here again, and so those things will transfer outside of a will because they are, in fact, like you said, I think you said they're like trust. They're a trust. That's exactly it. <laughs> Yeah, so I've seen that happen as well. Pastor Turner, did you have any additional questions or comments? The only question I had was, what are some resources that the people can use to start with the trust and start with wills that you that you know are tried and true? Yeah, the, um, as, as far as evolving a trust, of course, you know, uh, you can go, uh, there's, there's a plethora, like I said, of resources. Um, you know, there's an article that um, I just, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I just highlighted it. It's, it's trust in wills, uh, trust in wills in the United States. So uh, 
again, it's uh, Trust and Wills. You can, you can Google that, Trust and Wills in the United States. You'll, you'll pull up a, a, just a whole slew of a lot of resources, you know, on these things. Uh, there's a book, Trust and Wills for Dummies. <laughs> um, that is a very, very viable resource. You know, uh, one can actually uh, start at your local church. You know, you can talk to your pastor, um, you know, uh, or your you know, lay person in, in that, you know, uh, uh, place to really discuss some of these things. Oftentimes, a lot of churches are, you know, they're benefactors of, of trust. I mean, it's just, I mean, people say, hey, I don't want to leave money to my family. I don't leave it. I want to leave it to the Lord. <laughs> so, you know, they'll, they'll oftentimes leave it to a church and, you know, a pastor, or maybe they'll point someone, you know, an attorney. So, so those are, those are some areas, uh, basic areas that you can really um, start with. You know, uh, again, I do deal with these, you know, issues on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so if someone wants to, you know, reach out to myself, you know, I'll be happy to really, you know, guide them in the right places as well, as far as giving them some added resources. Uh, but it, it's, it's a very important topic. And as I mentioned before, at the very least, um, you need to have a basic will, you know, spend the money, spend the, spend the, uh, you know, the three to 500 bucks, whatever it's going to tell, get it done, get the legal process, you know, done, um, because it's, it's essential, you know, so many times uh, people pass on and, and their wishes just aren't carried out accordingly. And, and, it, and it's not because, you know, um, that there wasn't uh, enough money or whatever, if there is any money, it's just not executed and put in the proper places. And that's just one of the daunting things of any type of estate plan is not to have, you know, things in place. Make sure that you do the work and get that done. Very interesting topic, very interesting subject as well. Um, I certainly do want to, again, publicly thank you for all that you've poured into us and to the listening audience, how important these documents are, these legal documents, will, spillover wills, trust, all of these different things, the insurances that we've shared, everything that you've shared to date, uh, how important these things are for us as a community. As a matter of fact, you also point out, you know, uh, where we're deficient as a community, especially in the cases, a case of wills and trust. So we have a lot of work to do, uh, not only in sharing the information, but resharing information, continuing to uh, get out there and beat the drum for making sure that people protect their assets. Uh, because assets have a way of slipping through our community's fingers. And we already are at a disadvantage, if you will, from a wealth disparity standpoint. So all that we can do and all that you do in sharing this information is important to us as a community. So we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Um, Pastor Turner, if there are no further comments or questions, Brother Parker, did you have any closing comments? No, I just, uh, I, again, I appreciate the opportunity, you know, to, to really share uh, this vital information. As you mentioned, um, if you're impacting one person, you're, you're making a significant net. And I love the fact that, uh, you know, your virtual church uh, plays this broadcast back um, at on the, you know, Facebook Live. You, you have a recorded broadcast that repeatedly plays it back. So it gives your listeners an opportunity to surface and go back through and really, uh, you know, retrieve some of the information. So, um, you know, great job and uh, certainly appreciate the opportunity. Well, Pastor Turner, I think I opened us in prayer. So if you would be so kind as to close us out in prayer this week, we would be appreciative. No problem. We thank God for Brother Parker uh, once again being here with us, uh, taking out of his time to uh, impart wisdom um, to us. And we thank God for those who have watched with us as well. Uh, let us pray. God, we come to say thank you for this time we've had together. We say thank you for the fellowship. While we are still adjusting to a virtual format, we say thank you for that the for the fact that we are able to still gather virtually uh, and we pray that the time in which we're able to come together physically uh, is sooner than soon uh, we thank god for brother parker and the wisdom that he's imparted upon us uh, through the wisdom that you've given unto him we also say thank you for us to uh, as a people shifting our, our mindset uh, towards what we leave for those who we have left behind as we uh, return to god 
And we pray that we come back together once more again next week, even better than we, what we are now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. See you God next week. You. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Turner. Thank you, Brother Parker. Have a good night. All right. Amen.